We've heard too many stories of Australia's best brains being lost overseas because we couldn't afford to keep them here. Well, the Howard government launched a program to reverse that trend and one of the scientists it brought back home has come up with an invention that could revolutionise internet usage and earn a fortune for Australia. No It was dubbed the Information Superhighway, but demand for higher speed and larger loads are turning that superhighway into a very expensive car park. At Sydney University, a radical new invention could help unclog cyberspace's arteries, increasing the speed of the internet by hundreds of times and potentially cutting its costs. Breakthrough was at 640 gigabit per second. Ben Eggleton is considered one of Australia's smartest scientists. So smart, the federal government lured him home from the United States and Bell Laboratories, where in his mid-30s, he headed its research team. And it was something to drag him away from. Bell Labs, remember, claims transistors, lasers, solar cells, and even the cellular phone network as its own inventions. It was really there to reverse the brain drain. It was such a good offer that uh, I couldn't say no, offering an internationally competitive salary, but also really empowering Australian scientists to build programs that are internationally competitive and along the lines of what you can see in my laboratory here. That Australian Research Council Federation Fellowship paid off. He actually managed to slow down the speed of light in these optical systems. So it, you know, light goes from here to the moon in four seconds. But in Ben Eggleton's little optical chips, it actually goes at about walking pace. These radical chips were created under Eggleton's guidance at QDOS, the Centre for Ultra High Bandwidth Devices for Optical Systems. It's a collaboration of five Australian universities and a Danish one. They created the devices, then tested the speed of light moving across them. Perhaps the best way to explain this breakthrough is with traffic. Imagine that cars coming down a motorway are information, travelling as light down a fibre optic cable. At a telephone exchange, they hit a switch. It's electronic, its parts are copper, and that slows down the information dramatically. It's the equivalent of traffic coming to a toll booth on a motorway. We've really solved a bottleneck in the freeway, uh, which will allow massive increases in the capacity of the backbone. Of course, you need to get the bandwidth off the freeway and ultimately to the user. This revolutionary switch works because there's no copper in the glass chip, so the light is not converted to an electronic signal. So no speeds lost as the information is switched to homes and businesses. And though this device might speed up the internet radically, it won't immediately help most Australian households because of the interminable debate about the installation of a high-speed broadband network around the country and into our homes. We don't have optical fibres that go all the way into our homes and hook us up to this optical backbone. So at the moment there are a few regions of Australia, Tasmania is one, um, the ACT, Southern Queensland, there are a few regions that are getting optical fibres put into the home. The new networks that um, we're building today and that we're ready to build in the future like the National Broadband Network will consume enormous amounts of bandwidth and those ba that bandwidth is going to flow into the core of the network and that core of the network has to be increased in size dramatically over the next few years and we believe that this is the type of technology that can help us. The fastest broadband speed for most Australian homes right now is ADSL2. It goes at 20 megabytes per second and we know the frustration of waiting for a program or a video to download. By way of comparison, that experiment in Denmark went 32,000 times faster. Uh, we had numerous emails and phone calls. They were jumping up and down with joy that this device is simple. A piece of glass works at such a high speed. And what you've done, how does it affect my life in the future? Well, it's going to affect your life in the future through more bandwidth. That's what it's all about, more bandwidth. If we can speed up the freeways and if the highways and the roads can be built, then we're talking about 100 even a thousand times more bandwidth. You could perhaps, in a few years time, go into a hospital, get um, hooked up with the nurses there, and the surgery would actually be performed by an expert back in Washington. 
So you could have a robot with you present and if you had this real-time two-way video so that the surgeon could be watching you, he could actually be controlling that robot and doing the surgery, but remotely from Washington. You have a look. One of Ben Eggleton's collaborators is Barry Luther Davies from the Australian University, another of the exclusive club of 100 research fellows. This breakthrough is what scientists call a hero experiment. To show the technology can work, to get it commercialised is another massive assignment altogether. The worry for us would be that people uh, elsewhere in the world will take up these ideas and run with them with, with, with uh, you know, facilities that can probably move faster than we can move. We're battling to make sure we remain in the game. We're confident that if we can get continued support from our government for research, that we will commercialise this platform in Australia. We may sell initially to the international market, but the infrastructure, the expertise, the skills, the intellectual property resides in Australia. But you so might ask, if this technology is so good, where is Telstra and Optus? Why aren't they snapping up the rights to this technology and improving their own networks? Whether this development is the key one or not is still yet to be proven with time. But we, we look at all these technology developments to understand where we're going in the future and how we will get there. And um, the, these types of t uh, technology developments uh, will enable us to achieve the, the throughput and bandwidth we need for our networks in the future. There's an old rule is that you know you need a dollar to do the research, you need ten dollars just to do the, the pre-commercial development and then another hundred dollars to actually get, get the product out there. So you know we're down at this, this uh, very basic end at the moment with the resources. This is only the beginning. Uh, there's a lot more research to be done. We've literally scratched the surface on this exciting platform uh, obviously the vision now is to develop uh, further sophisticated photonic circuits and offer more functionality that uh, will enhance future networks. Nine's Finance Editor Ross Greenwood there. And we'll be back with more of Sunday, including the latest news, after this. Mm -hmm.